Bible says God shall not be mocked. Now, does that not mean the enemy doesn't try to choke the life out of you? He does. We just talked about that. But I found if I don't like what I'm reaping, I need to change what I'm sowing. And sometimes it's a good indication of where my faith is at. You mean your faith can change? Absolutely. Some days you're more engaged than others. But you always need to be engaged, okay? Uh, well, let's go to that verse. Let's see where I had it at this morning. I have several things pulled up here. Uh, just read this last week. Yeah, I'll be, I think I've read it the last couple of weeks. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 9. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 9. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So you, the Bible also says, you shall know them by their fruit. So you can fool everybody else, but you can't fool, you can't you can't fake your fruit. You can fake everything else, but you can't fake your fruit. The fruit in your life is who you really are in God. Come on, it's also part of your character. How many know building your character and changing your character is hard work? If it was easy, everybody would be doing it, right? But if you want to eat the good of the land, how many know we have to work on our character? But if you don't examine your fruit and change what you're sowing, you're just going to keep adding more junk to your plate that chokes the life out of you. Do you see where I'm going here? The enemy will put enough stuff on your plate, you don't have to help him add to it. But you do need to be adding the right stuff on your plate. Amen? Amen. So, for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall the Spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well-doing. Now, I've preached on this a bunch throughout the years. I mean, oh, God doesn't just say these things offhanded. Well, you may get tired. Of no, he said, you're going to get wool bomb out, and I need to encourage you to encourage yourself that in due season you're going to reap. But you've got to hold the line. How do you do that? By casting your cares upon him and keep sowing the right things. Even on days you don't feel it, even on, on Tuesday when you don't have the goosebumps, the word is still the word, the faith is still the faith, and you have to be filling it up and putting it out. What are you saying? What are you speaking? What are you believing? I've got a few things I've been resisting for a long time, and in the natural, I'm like, Lord, come on, man. But either his word is all true or none true, right? And whenever I start filling my plate get full, I'm human just like you. I've got to go take it to the Father. We're going to get to the other part we're going to do about that a little later on. It's the best part of the message. Just hang on and stay away. God will not be what? Whatsoever a man, that shall be. If you want to know what's going on in our nation, you can look at that scripture right there. You know, everybody, and we have tons of religious people in America, but we have very few true believers. Everybody will say they're upset they took school, they, they took the prayer out of school, they took the Bible, they have all those things. Do you know what? If they hadn't taken it out of the homes first, they never could have got it out of the school. Right. America right now is, is eating the fruit that it's, that it's sown for the last 65, 70 years or longer. Amen. Do I still love America? Absolutely. Do I want to see America turn around? Absolutely. We're going to look at a scripture about it. But America and Americans first have to look at ourselves and say, you know what? You're like, preacher, we're here this morning. We're like the cream of the crop. You should be lucky we're here on Sunday morning. I am lucky you're here. And we have a few tuned in on mine. But, you know, if you just pray, God come heal our land without acknowledging the seeds that's been sown. Well, I didn't do that, preacher. No, but we're part of yeah. the group of people that did. Yes. 
I mean, when you can allow me, we've killed more babies than Hitler ever killed Jews. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Now, like I said, I'm just go ahead. And, I'm a full medal this morning. I haven't been to a big corporate prayer gathering for our nation in a few years because I've been resisting. But everyone I've been to, and I've been to hundreds, possibly even thousands, is usually people telling God what they want Him to do. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. So if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Now, this is what I'm getting at. By telling God what to do, does that sound very humbling to you? No. When you say, God, we're a mess, we've allowed this, this, and this in our nation, and we repent for that. We say, why don't we have one of the prayer meetings Maybe we would have. Again, we've had them in the past. But do you know where it has to start at? In your home, in your heart. Come on. Humble and pray and seek my face. Once again, you're like, we're here today. When, and now we're, listen, you know where revival starts at? In each one of us. Yes. You want to see revival in America? It's got to start. We've had a lot of good starts around here. But then look around. Why? Because one, people let the cares of this world choke the life out of them. Number two, uh, it's hard work to keep seeking God's face. <laughs> and most people are more concerned about what God can do for them instead of what they can do for God. Now, some of you are just starting out with God. Don't let me scare you. You're like, this is too much for me. <laughs> I was there once. I said those things too. But listen, would you? We're going to get to the good stuff, like I said at the end of this message. But would you ever want to go back to being without His peace and joy? No. No. Nobody does. So we're going to do what it takes. But you know, yesterday there, well, everybody has a million conspiracy theories, and I've watched the video. And I don't buy into conspiracy theories. And to be honest with you, I don't even know what the truth is anymore. I don't trust media. I don't trust much anybody with anything. But President Trump, there was a there was a, an attempt on his life and then someone shot and some a couple others injured. And you know what? That is horrific. Yeah. It is. I'm also going to shock you and tell you something else. I was at the uh, doctor's office here a while back and there was a, there was a young black man checking me out there. Out of nowhere, he's like, well, who would you vote for? Which one? I said, you don't want me to answer that question. And he said, no, I want to know. I said, well, I'd vote kingdom. He said, what's that mean? I said, I'd vote the kingdom of God because ain't neither one of them worth a hoot. Just because you say all the right things don't make you the right because we can look at, and I've said that before Trump was in office. Do I believe God used Trump? Yes, I do. But God can use a donkey, so let's not make more of it than what it is. That's right. That's right. Look, at the, look at the fruit in Trump's life. He doesn't show up as a believer. He doesn't show up of any of those things. But God still used him. Is he better than Biden? Absolutely. Biden and all that whole, that whole party is going down the, down the rabbit hole of all the demonic things. But here's the thing, both parties lie, neither one of them tell the truth, Don't none of them have those things. So they're not the answer to our problem. The answer is the kingdom of God. Now I still do my due diligence, and, and we I taught on this all years ago. If you wasn't around, I'm sorry you missed it. And, uh, but I still do my due diligence, and I'm a patriot, and I will, I will vote for the lesser of two evils whenever it comes uh, time to vote. Okay, I told you, most of you are going to hear me talk about these things. But this says, if my people called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Now, am I up here trying to tell you who to vote for? Does that, is this what no. this sounds like to you? No. no. 
I'm telling you that we need to start humbling ourselves. Our nation is a mess. And you know what? I don't see it in the last days when the, whenever the, the, it's unfolding. I don't see America in that part. I don't know if we'll still be around or not be around, you know. There's lots of other people who want to take pot shots at that. What I do know is that if I'll keep my heart right, humble myself and pray, he says, he'll come heal my way. How many know America needs healing? Yes, amen. But before I can help heal America, yeah. I've got to make sure I'm all healed up. Amen. And all hitting on all eight cylinders, right? <laughs> Come on. And so, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, how many know prayer is not something people really like to do anymore? They like to give a list of petitions, but they don't like to pray. Whenever we have prayer meetings, I'm going to give you a secret. It may offend some of you today, but hopefully it doesn't. One of the reasons that we don't have a lot of big prayer meetings during this season is because usually everybody comes to hear me pray. I'm just saying how it is. And now, you need, do you all get in agreement with me? Absolutely. Do we move heaven when you're in agreement with me? Yes. But how many of you know it didn't just say have Pastor Brian come and pray? He said, if my people, that means it's got to motivate you enough to pray. Amen. Right? He didn't just say, one. If, if Pastor Brian will pray, I will come heal your way. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I wish that was that easy and we could have got this taken care of years ago. Yeah. But he said, my people, right? And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I don't have any wicked ways. You lying dog. You've had some and you wouldn't need a savior. Paul, who, one of the greatest apostles, wrote 14 books of the New Testament, said, oh, wretched man that I am. I want to do things I shouldn't do and I'm so ticked off and I'm paraphrasing here and I'm so ticked off at myself because I still have desires I shouldn't have. But did he let those desires rule him? No. no, he did not. We can look at the fruit in his life. He kept those under wraps, but he was still disgusted that sometimes he wanted to do things he didn't want to do. You know, like when the spirit of the slap comes on me. <laughs> I don't want to do it and I don't do it, but boy, sometimes I would just be nice just to Give them a little attitude adjustment. I really don't deal with that that much more anymore. He said, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. America needs healed now more than ever. But you can't give something you don't have. And to say that you don't need healed He sets the standards for fairness. Well, this sure don't look very fair out there. But if you're a blood bought believer, his scales are even. And he sets the standards for fairness. Well, this is going to, listen, there's going to be things in the world until they truly repent and turn that's going to get a little rougher, I hate to tell you. There's things you can do to prepare a little bit for that. Am I saying we're going to have the last days right now? I'm not here preaching that this morning. I'm just saying be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. But know that God's scales are even. Quit making your life decisions based on somebody else's fruit. Our nation is reaping their fruit. I'm my part of this nation, yes, but I'm also a blood-bought believer who promises he'd take care of me. There was, listen, there was widows dying in a nation that was under the curse, and a prophet showed up, and they got spared. You don't think God can't do that for you in the midst of all of this? And other times, he prophesied to them that there would be a famine. Get your, get your stuff together, right? 
your mom, Daniel and them, they were there was stuff going on there. God spared them. Uh, moving along. All right, so you read the one on the left. How many know Jesus is our scale judger? The Lord detests dishonest scales, but accurate weights find favor with him. So, you know, the Bible says a man keeps his word to his own hurt. Make sure your fruit's lined up. Okay, you got the gist of all that for today? We're going to go to the founding verse for this church. Luke 4.18. This is Jesus talking. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. This is what God still called us to do every day. It's what Jesus is still doing. But remember all those cares I was talking about at the beginning? There's not one of them that this verse don't fix. There's not one of them that this verse don't fix. To preach the gospel to the poor. Those that are without. What's the gospel? The good news that God's scales are even. His way is just. Come on. To a poor man, that's comforting. To someone that has no advocate, that is comforting. To someone that has no, no father figure, that is comforting. To someone that doesn't have enough to pay their own way, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. To a poor man, that is comforting. And do you also know who God uses upon the face of the earth? You and me, we're his hands and feet. Today, is there anybody in here that just needs to remind himself of the good news. Anybody in here, you know, there's there's lots of ways to be poor. It's just not money. It's food. It's poor in spirit even. But the good news is that my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Does it happen overnight? No. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. All right, so how many in here, don't raise your hand, has ever been broken hearted? How many know you can't help someone else get healed until you're healed? But the good news is he came to heal your broken heart. But you have to give it to him. Remember what we said? Cast your cares upon him. You want to see revival in America? You want to see this world change upside down? You know, some of the hardest work I've ever done in my life was working on me. I'm still working on me. I probably will be until he takes me home. But this church was found in broken chains. You know, that means that the chains that the enemy has had upon you are broken so that you're free to sow new seeds upon this earth. And you know what's great is that most people, when they hear that, they think it's some radical thing. And we've seen the radical. But I've seen people of every area of life, every caliber of life, every societal level of life come through this church. And I've seen chains broken off their life. Physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially. I've seen them broken. But do you know what happens when you start letting the cares of this life choke you and you start growing weary and well doing? You start finding these promises hard to believe. They work for other people, but will they work for you? To preach deliverance to the captives. Do you know people that are captive a lot of times don't even know they're captive? Just ask the lobster in the tank. 
<laughs> and recovering of sight to the blind. Lots of people are blinded. They've had all kinds of religious stuff. It's not our job to badmouth them. It's not our job to belittle them. It's our job to help set them free and restore them. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen? I have one more verse for you today. You know, who the Son sets free is free indeed. I can't make you cast your cares upon the Lord. All I can do is get up here and encourage you to do it. I can encourage you to let God move in your life. I can't make you believe the promises of God this morning. How many in here would like to just leave some stuff, some stuff in church today? Well, how about I leave us in a prayer? And we just do that. Sound all right with everybody? Yeah. Yeah. How many believe that the Spirit, listen, he gives the any man that asks liberally, right? Yes, the Bible also talks about me laying hands on you, and I have no problem with doing that. But wouldn't it be great if you just asked this morning and the Holy Spirit came and ministered to you right where you're at because you believe the word? So he'll give to any man that asks liberally, right? Romans 15, 13. Let's go there real quick. Now the God of hope, that God who confidently anticipated the promise of the God, or yes and amen, fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. After you've cast your care upon him, you can say, God, you said you would fill me with joy and hope and peace through the power of the Holy Ghost. What's that do? That energizes you that you can withstand these things and believe against all odds that God is who he says he is and can do what he said he can do. Has anybody here never had to encourage themselves in the Lord? Has anybody ever not had this time of day where I don't see a way out of this but God? You know, when God puts his butt in things, things happen. <laughs> when the, or as if, the, when the devourer shows up, God says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He said it, I believe it, it's so. Whosoever can have whatsoever they ask in faith, believe it. Right? But I tried that and it didn't work for me. No, you quit before your harvest was there and you cursed it yourself. Now knock it off and get back to it, stand in faith, and quit trying to make God look like a liar because he can't. That's life in the pits of hell. And, and on top of that, when you did that, it stole all your joy and you've been miserable ever since. Now get back in the joy tank where it's fun. Repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I choose to cast my cares upon you. And I thank you that you're washing me in the blood of the Lamb and setting me free and healing my heart and giving me liberty. And I ask you <laughs> to fill my joy tank and, and give me peace. In Jesus' strong name I pray. In Jesus' strong name I pray.